I'm David Callies and I teach property law at the University of Hawaii's Richardson School of Law. I'm Gordon Hilton and I teach at Marquette University Law School. And we have two other co-authors, Dan Mandelker, who teaches property law at Washington University, St. Louis, and John Martinez, who teaches at Utah. Well, the focus of Concise Introduction to Property Law is the fundamental first-year course in property that most law schools require. And we have designed the book so that it will cover about everything that one would need to take other courses having to do with property like intellectual property, zoning, land use, estates and future interests, and to do it all in one semester. The book is, is comprehensive, uh, so it performs as a foundation for other property courses, but it also contains all the information that a student needs to know if this turns out to be the only property course that they take in law school. It's designed for a first year property course and it's designed to fit within one semester. Uh, we aim to cover all of the topics that one would normally cover in a first year property course. We also take the position that property, is, even as a first year course, is both a private law course but also a public law course. So our, our book integrates public and private materials, unlike the more traditional approach of putting all the public law materials at the end of the book. The book is such that the materials can be used in courses of varying length, uh, so a three credit course would work. Um, the idea of the book is though that the entirety of the book could be used in a four credit course. We have designed it so that it is, it is a one semester course book, but whether it's three or four hours, it's easy to take little bits out to do it in three and add them back in to do it in four. Also, if you're a teacher who's still teaching a year-long property book, the book can serve as a foundation with supplemental material for teaching a year-long course as well. All of us in, involved in the writing of concise uh, introduction to property law have different other major subject areas in which we teach. I teach in land use, Gordon teaches in the history field and in intellectual property. Uh, Dan Mandelker teaches in the land use area, and um, our, our fourth co-author, uh, John Martinez, teaches in the local government area. So we bring these perspectives to the book, keeping in mind that it is, after all, a fundamental course in real property that we're trying to address. And at the same time, we try to incorporate each of these perspectives in different ways in every chapter. So it's not that there's part of the book is about only about land use and part is only about intellectual property. It's all organized by a kind of larger concept of the modern notion of property. Our casebook reintroduces personal property as a concept, both as a teaching tool and as something that students should know a little bit something about if they take no other course in law school having to do with personal uh, items and, and such things. And so to that extent, it is uh, new uh, in terms of coverage. It also covers intellectual property and it covers zoning and land use in a more extensive fashion than a lot of books do because we think that that represents the modern trend towards what folks are doing with real property when they get out to practice. Yes, I agree. That's one of the most distinctive features of our book. The conventional property book seems to divide property into private law and public law of property and puts the public law materials at the end of the book. We introduce the public law materials much earlier in the story and we continue to weave public and private materials together uh, throughout the entire casebook. Generally speaking, I think most property professors like to follow the way the book is ordered because students get increasingly nervous when, when things are taught out of order. But there is virtually no cross-referencing in the book. Uh, the, the chapters are arranged uh, so that one could start virtually anywhere and then go back and forward. They are individual and distinct units of property that we teach. Uh, each chapter sort of can stand on its own and therefore could easily be used in any order.
Yes, we've prepared a comprehensive teacher's manual that's particularly designed for the person who's teaching property for the first time or at the early stages of their career. Uh, our idea for the teacher's manual is that it sets up a kind of dialogue between the manual and the teacher so that it's not just a source of instruction, but it's a source of conversation between the authors and the person using the book. Well, we've done a number of things, one of which is the final chapter is devoted to the topic of real estate transactions, and there are extensive materials in that chapter that cover everything from the beginning of the real estate sale negotiations through the acquisition of a mortgage and everything in between. We also, the book has substantial material on intellectual property, which is a bread and butter, uh, butter subject, zoning and local government, which is a bread and butter subject, uh, very practical um, cases on covenants and servitudes and subdivision, which is a very much a, a real property, real estate, bread and butter subject. So we have tried to respond and I think we've succeeded. Yes, the, the idea of the book is to try to reflect what it is that a modern lawyer who practices in the area of property actually does. We appreciate your interest in concise introduction to property law. If you have any questions about the book or how one might go about using it in the classroom, feel free to contact any of the co-authors. Um, we'll all be happy to speak with you about it.